And now, the hot seat. And here's your host, Melba Williams. Welcome to the hot seat with me, Melba Williams. We are back and so excited to have so many shows coming your way for the new year. But today, we have a very, very, very special guest. We have the Assistant Director for Recruitment and Admissions for Southern University at Shreveport, Miss Aquina Grant. Hi. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. It's really excited that you're here in Shreveport. You have just had a wealth of knowledge about higher education and recruitment and enrollment just throughout your career. So tell our viewers, viewers a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, so I've been in higher education for about 15 years, wow. and um, I had the opportunity to work at a couple of um, for-profit schools, and so I got the bulk of my knowledge um, wow. in admissions, um, working for a lot of different companies. A lot of different mm -hmm. companies. I know some of those companies were um, some of the so, nonprofit schools. So I've worked for Kaplan Higher Education. Wow. I also work for a company called Nobel Learning Communities, um, and they right. have about 180 campuses across the country. Um, Kaplan had about 80 campuses across the country, and so wow. I've lived in California, Nevada, Texas. I've just been all over. And then we were able to do the, you know, reel you in and, and bring home. you to Shreveport. <laughs> So what I do know is an interesting story that we both attended high school here in Shreveport. We did. Right. So tell us about your hometown connection to Shreveport when, so, and your favorite high school. So <laughs> I'm from here, and of course my favorite high school is Booker T. Washington, class Absolutely. of 95, go Lions. Yeah, go Lions. <laughs> well, I know something, you know, with the change of everything with, um, you know, the school closure, or, well, the adjustment that they're making yes. with Fair Park and some of the students will be attending Booker T. Washington, how do you think that's going to affect um, the school system? Because that ultimately affects Southern University and other colleges. It absolutely will. And so I've, I've also had the opportunity to attend some of the meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and so the community has, you know, let their voice be heard about the closure. And, and so it would be essentially doubling the school in size. Wow. Um, and so, you know, we've been very concerned as alumnus. We've been very concerned about that. And you know, what resources will it take to, you know, ensure that our students are successful and their students as well. And so mm -hmm. what we, you know, we want to make sure that these students are set up for success, Absolutely. whatever they choose to do. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I'm really hopeful that the transition will be smooth, not only for the students, but for the administration, because they're right. ultimately going to have to, you know, make it a really great experience for those Ab students. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, you know, with that being said, and the changes in Cattle Parish and the changes in admission standards, what are some of the things that parents need to look for as they are considering colleges and oh, you know uh, moving oh. forward to not maybe not necessarily you know getting a college degree but you know maybe getting a certificate or credential what are some of the things parents or students need to be you know looking for so the, the first thing I tell parents is ensure that their schools are accredited. So mm. as they're researching schools, Absolutely. make sure that they're looking at accredited institutions, know the difference between regional versus national accreditation, um, because mm -hmm. all of that is going to uh, be serious in regards to transferability of credits. If my child right. goes to this school and they want to transfer, will those credits transfer? And, and in most times, if the school is national versus regional, nine times out of 10, those credits won't transfer. What's like a national institution as as opposed to regional, maybe. So a national institution, um, you know. Would, oh, we're not calling up the call names, but okay. you know, <laughs> but so maybe give would, us an example. Would be probably like your, you know, art institutes, your okay. uh, Brown Mackey Universities, your UEIs, sure, um, schools like that, absolutely, um, are nationally mm -hmm. accredited. And so when they spend two years at those schools and then they think that they can transfer to a four-year institution, it's highly unlikely. Um, that their credits were transferred from those type of schools. Absolutely. I know that, you know, a lot of the for-profit in institutions have gotten a bad rap recently. Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe shed a little light on, you know, we've gotten a lot of phone calls and I know that our viewers are really concerned about, um, you know, their credits and what happens. Can you give a little insight on what's happening nationally with some sure. of the for-profit institutions? Sure, so one of the largest accrediting bodies, um, which is ACICS, which is the Accrediting Council for Independent Colleges mm -hmm. and Schools, actually lost their standing with the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. And so that affected um, several school schools across the U.S. Mm -hmm. So um, what happened was when they lost their standing with the Department of Education, um, that caused the institutions to lose their accreditation. Uh -huh. Now, it will not cause students to lose their financial aid. Oh, that's so a good thing. They're, 
it is a good thing. So mm -hmm. they're giving the schools 18 months to try to find a new accrediting body. Sure. However, in that time frame, they still aren't accredited. Ah. So the student has to make the decision, do I want to stay at this school that has no accreditation, or do I want to try to go to another school? Absolutely. And that puts a lot of students in a very interesting predicament. Absolutely. Yeah, because a lot of the uh, schools I know in Shreveport, you know, we do have institutions that were accredited we by those agencies. There were two here. Yeah. So how do you think that's going to, you know, translate into other colleges, maybe like LSUS, Southern, I know you work at Southern, and other institutions? How do you think that's going to you know, fair. So I, I think that those students will start to look um, mm -hmm. once, and so the institutions, of course, they don't want to broadcast that this has happened to them, but sure. they um, are required to let the students know what's going on. Absolutely. So once the students find out, they, they will start looking, yeah. and so our community colleges, as a result, could feel a little bump in enrollment. Soon. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, and that's good that, you know, hopefully those students will find a great place to land, and right. And of course, we're hopeful that those institutions will, you know, hopefully find a, other accrediting bodies because I think the benefit um, in higher education is that people have choice. Right. People you know, have so they choice. get to choose. You know, they get to choose if they want a nonprofit organization or a for-profit institution. So that's the benefit in choice. You know. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about um, where you are. I know okay. you, I, I think if I were to ask if they had a choice, I think I know where you would ask them I to choose. I would absolutely tell them to choose Southern University here in Shreveport. <laughs> well, tell us why. I mean, I know you have an affinity for the school, um, working you know, at Southern University. I do, and although I've been here a short time, I, I have just fallen in love with this campus, and I absolutely love being here. Um, I love feeling a part of the family here, and um, everyone has been so welcoming, and so it's been easy to talk to students and families about coming here because everyone has made me feel so welcome. Well, that, that's a good thing, and I think, you know, some of the students feel the same way. So maybe tell me some of the highlights of your, you know, you've started, you've hit the ground running. What are some of the things that, you, you know, that surprised you most about, you know, Southern? Um, just, again, the family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So this is also my first experience uh, working with an HBCU. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, really, yeah. Yeah, it really is one big family. Um, I would like to share, though, that my parents are Graham alums. So okay. they, were not, they were not too <laughs> well, happy so about me working for Southern. <laughs> so sorry, Dad. But I, yes. do, I do love being here. And, and again, it, it, it was surprising that it really is what people say it is. Sure. Um, it is a family atmosphere, and everyone cares for everyone, and everyone puts the students first. And so you really feel that here that, you know, faculty and staff, no matter what, the student comes first. Yeah, and, and you know, it's interesting because Southern has won so many awards. I know, um, you know, several years back, it's been Washington Monthly's, you know, one of the top colleges and so on and so forth. And, and I, even recently with Chancellor Ellis being featured on the cover of the Shreveport Times about mm -hmm. having a family atmosphere, I think that's uh, probably something that has been a draw for many students because you're not just a number. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It, it, it definitely is a draw, and um, it really helps in selling the school as well. So when I'm out in high schools mm -hmm. and when I'm uh, you know, going to these places and talking with families and talking with students, they can, actually, they can feel it. Um, mm -hmm. And they know that it's genuine and it's real. And so when they come on campus as well, like during registration, um, and although it was a crazy time, yeah. you know, it was it was the bewitching oh, wow. hour. They still felt that they knew that you know whatever department they went to that they would be taken care of. Sure, and that's a and that's a great thing. And and you know I think you know some of it is attributed to the faculty. And maybe you Absolutely. can talk a little bit about the faculty and their commitment. You know, so. Um, our faculty here is, you know, the most credentialed and, mm -hmm. you know, I have just been amazed at, at the, um, the amount of um, intelligence that we have here and the number of PhDs that this institution has wow. to be a community college. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely, really, to have so much credentialed PhDs and um, the faculty are just wonderful and they're brilliant in their mm -hmm. prospective fields. Yeah. And I, that goes to show that Shreveport does attract great talent. Absolutely. You know, I think a lot of people think, oh, I got to go to Dallas to get an education. You know, I need to go down south or I might need to, you know, go online. But there are opportunities right, right in here. Shreveport. Right here in Shreveport. Absolutely. And then I understand that there's a unique partnership even with LSUS. Yes. Um, that you could tell a little bit about that because it's not just, 
you know, Southern University Shreveport, but they're also reaching out to yes. other institutions. So just recently here, um, Chancellor Ellis and um, Dr. Larry Clark. Clark, thank you. <laughs> Dr. Larry Clark signed an agreement um, that our students are able to, once they complete here, if they choose to transfer to a four-year institution or LSU as here in Shreveport, they're able to do that. And so that's just one of the benefits of attending um, Susla here and that partnership that we've made with them. And it goes into exactly what you were saying about you know, being able to transfer those credits to ensure yes. a seamless transition. Yes. You know? Yes. So. And, and so being able to do that um, with a traditional um, institution is just, you know, it speaks volume. Absolutely. Well, okay, Ms. Grant, you stay in the hot seat. Okay. Okay. And they're going to go to commercial and we'll be right back. Hot seat with me, Melville Williams. After these messages, we'll be right back with more hot seat with Melville Williams. Since 1985, JNS Electronics has served the architects with superior electronics from transistors, resistors, and fuses. We carry HDMI cables and a wide selection of AV cables and connectors. We also have a large supply of batteries and tools to handle your projects. Need CAT6 or CCTV systems? Call us at 318-631-8675 or come see us today at 6437 Greenwood Road. The difference between significance and insignificance is choice. And sometimes making those choices are tough. But isn't it amazing that our past has no place in determining our future and that where we are now doesn't have to be where we'll be forever? So I'm not focusing on where I have been. Instead, I look to where I am heading and I'm going somewhere great because I am Southern. Welcome back to The Hot Seat with me, Nova Williams. Today we have a very special guest, the Assistant Director for Recruitment and Admissions for Southern University at Shreveport, Ms. Aquina Grant. Thank Welcome you. back to The Hot Seat. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, in the first segment, we had a great opportunity to talk a little bit about what's going on in for-profit institutions, um, students transferring into, you know, their credits being able to transfer. But I think one thing that is key are the programs. Yes you know, are the programs. And even with certain schools not being accredited now and right. some that are still looking for accrediting agencies, you know, the programs are really key. Yes, and, you know, absolutely. and having those programs, not just the school accredited, but the programs. Yes, the programmatic accreditation, absolutely. absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about that and yes. the difference? Yes, so um, again, when parents and students are looking at institutions and schools, so they want to look at the national, the regional, and, mm -hmm. and as well as some institutions require programmatic accreditation. Absolutely. So like nursing has to be approved through the Board of Nursing. Mm -hmm. Dental has to be approved through their board. So each state mm -hmm. um, has requirements and boards that um, they need to be certified and approved through. And that just means mm -hmm. that those programs have gone through a rigorous um, amount of um, review. Review, yeah. exactly. Review mm -hmm. and feedback to ensure that they meet the standards. Mm -hmm. And so what that says is the Department of Education and those accrediting bodies give you their stamp of approval saying that they've met that that requirement. That's that's good to know and I think like I said for parents and 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 for students out there that are interested look at all three of those absolutely. factors. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about a couple of accredited programs at Southern University of Shreveport. Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows, you know, Southern is known for the nursing program. Yes. So, we have a wonderful um, RN program here and we also just started a brand new LPN program here mm -hmm. um, and we also have a bridge program an LPN to RN bridge so students who already have their LPN and mm -hmm. they want to take that next step in life and get their RN we have a bridge program and that's a shortened right. program for them as well. So is that program accredited and fully accredited Absolutely. with their agencies? Absolutely that program is fully accredited with the nursing board of Louisiana. That's, that's good to know and I think you know especially when students are looking for jobs. I mean, yes. you really want to to consider those Yes, things. and as students are doing their research, they want to take a look at their NCLEX scores, and so that is mm. the test, the exam. Um, the, that NCLEX. Are, the NCLEX. The okay. NCLEX is the exam that the students have to take and pass, and so each institution has to publish um, their NCLEX scores, and so the state board wow. publishes Absolutely. them. So you can look and see what schools um, are passing and, you know, whose graduates have the highest score as they're searching and yeah. looking for So programs. why is that important? Why do I can't just think I'm just going to roll up and... 
I mean, why is that passage rate, you know, why is that something like important to look at, you know? So the students want to ensure that the school's passing rate, because that means the number of graduates that they have, are actually meeting the requirements to work in that field. Uh -huh. And so if that school's not producing any graduates, they might want to keep looking. Okay, <laughs> that's a good point. That is an excellent point. So you got the nursing program, you have the CNA program, and the LPN. We do have the CNA program. So how program. does that transition I mean so um, it's it's kind of like a feeder mm -hmm. so if if someone comes in because oh, uh, I forget I failed to mention that there are different entrance requirements for the nursing program gotcha. they have to take uh, take a separate entrance exam to actually be admitted into the program so okay. after they complete their prerequisites they take a separate exam to be to, to receive a seat in the program so gotcha. for students who may not be ready yet um, mm -hmm. to get into the RN program mm -hmm. then they're able to start in the CNA program and then work their way up and so they can right. go through straight through and do the CNA to the LPN to the RN right. and so the, and then yeah. the good thing about that is they can find a job Absolutely. while they're in school yeah. and so you don't have to just you know go straight through you can get each license and be working while you go to school yeah and so that's the benefit that's I mean, that is a, the number that is, one benefit yeah because you know if you start here and you can continue on you're still getting the experience of being in the you know, in the healthcare field yes. and being able to make some money. At the and same being time. able to make some money and provide <laughs> for their families at the same time. So, like I said, everybody knows about nursing, but yeah. what are some other allied health programs? I know you have the HIT program. I and, and I, you know what? I'm gonna talk about HIT. I love HIT. That's okay. Now, what is HIT? Is H HIT <laughs> is Health Information Technology, and let me tell you why HIT is so important. So a few years ago, um, President Obama mandated that all hospitals go what? Paperless. Paperless. So digital. Digital. Stuff so in the cloud. Stuff in the cloud. <laughs> so we're in the information age. So it is the health information wow. technologist that manages all of that information. Mm. And so this field is so new and it's growing so fast that there aren't even enough people in it yet. And wow. so this is one of those 21st century jobs that students mm -hmm. need to be looking for. And so that is what I share with students. Make sure that wow. you are looking at 21st century careers. And HIT is definitely one of those mm -hmm. in-demand 21st century careers. So the days of medical transcriptionists, the days of file clerks. Sure. So no one is in a back room moving files yeah. anymore and, and, and transcribing <laughs> medical records. Sure. All of those things are now digital. And it takes someone... Um, so HIT is like your the best of both worlds. It's an IT person married to a healthcare person. Oh, nice. And, okay, and so that's if, really if I can put that way, yeah. put it that way. And so what you have is someone who is digitally savvy, um, that is also passionate about healthcare, and they manage all of that information. Wow. So how long does it take to get a degree or certificate in HIT? So HIT is also a two-year program. Mm. And so, so in two student, years, in yeah. two years, a student can come mm. out, um, and that that is also a program that also has programmatic accreditation. And so they, we have AHIMA and Kahim, um, which are the accrediting bodies that accredits that program. So the students come out and they're able to sit for their um, Kahim license. Wow. And don't ask me what that stands for. I no, I, okay. I, that <laughs> not, that's not a, I know you're in the hot seat, but I won't make it in that tough. So tell me about the money. You know, so if I finish this HIT, I mean, what, you know, what is the career so, wage look like? So the good thing about HIT is because it's in so in so much demand, according to the Department of Labor, you know, students can start anywhere from 65000 and that's wow. with an associate's degree. Wow. And so I also tell students, you know, when they're doing their research, to take a look at the U.S. Department of Labor Absolutely. and the Occupational Outlook yeah. Handbook to find out what those medial salaries are. Yeah, because, you know, when you're searching, I mean, you don't want to go searching for things that aren't going to pay off or exactly. give you a return. So that's that's really awesome. Okay, great. So, and one special place that I like at Southern University is the dental hygiene yes, department. Yes, our dental hygiene Love it. department. I get my teeth cleaned there. <laughs> okay. Yes, I am a patient. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the dental hygiene. So I know the, all about it, but. So yeah. the dental hygiene program is also an associate's degree program, and the wonderful thing about that is it has a clinic that is open to the public. And so our students get to have real world experience, real life experience every day working on patients and wow. so that is the best way to learn so it's hands-on training in demand every day and you know for me it was great to have the experience of having students who are you know being supervised by yes. you know top-notch faculty 
and you know they do your teeth cleaning you can get the whitening i mean it was really i mean i i enjoy my experience every time there and it's so inexpensive so it is. you know it's good for if you if you don't have you know dental insurance it's a great place to go to get your teeth clean at a reasonable Absolutely. rate like 20 bucks so right yeah. And, and they get the practice that they need before they also take their state boards. Absolutely. So another program that requires a state board exam. Yeah. Awesome. 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 And so you talked a little bit about the CNA and the high, and some of the um, allied health programs. And you mentioned something earlier in the break about HCOP. Yes. Um, so the wonderful thing about those allied health programs is we have um, an additional grant um, that could possibly pay for it. Yeah, because how can I, am I going to pay for all this How stuff, are they right? going to pay okay. for it? <laughs> so, a great question. So in addition to the FAFSA and the and the, um, the federal money that a student can apply for, we also and have student something. Loans and student and, loans. Yeah, that's which you've got to pay back. Right, and, which you got to pay back. Um, we also have the HCOP, which is another grant um, that a student would not have to pay back. So if mm. they are in those allied health programs, they can possibly ap apply for an additional grant to help cover their tuition. A queen of grant? You got a lot of grant information. <laughs> of grant. I like that. I like that. Pun intended. <laughs> Pun intended. Exactly. That's that's you know why we have a lot of fun here. Yes. But I am. That is really that. It's really awesome. And so the university has a lot of grant and financial aid available. Yes, and scholarship opportunities. And scholarship as well. opportunities. Yes. So speaking of opportunities, I hear there's another big opportunity coming up with a spring fast track program. Yes. So um, March sixth. Okay. Is our spring fast track enrollment. And so what this is doing is giving an opportunity to students, if they did not have a chance to enroll in the spring, they can do it right now mm. and start school March 6th. And the great thing is they won't be behind um, this the cohort. They'll end Absolutely. the semester with everyone else. Right. So although they're starting later, they'll still end on time. And right. so that is the best thing about the Fast wow. Track program. So do you have a lot of classes? Is it just a select number? So we do have a select number of classes, and students need to call. Um, they need to call me. Okay. <laughs> and they can, I'll say my number is 670-9488. So okay. they can give me a call, and then I'll direct them um, to what they Wonderful. need to do um, to apply, and then also and connect them with advisement to find out what classes are available. Wonderful. Well, I am really excited about the Spring Fast Track Program. So if you're ready to start running with your education, now is the time to do it at Southern University with the spring fast track. I mean, why not, right? Why not? And now's the time to do it. <laughs> yes. Come be Southern. Come be Southern. <laughs> so listen, don't go. Okay. We have another break. Okay. We're gonna um, just we're gonna talk a little bit more about Southern, but uh, we'll be right back with me, Melvin Williams, in the hot seat. We'll be right back with more hot seat with Melvin Williams. Since 1985, JNS Electronics has served the architects with superior electronics from transistors, resistors, and fuses. We carry HDMI cables and a wide selection of AV cables and connectors. We also have a large supply of batteries and tools to handle your projects. Need CAT6 or CCTV systems? Call us at 318-631-8675 or come see us today at 6437 Greenwood Road. Welcome back to the hot seat with me, Melville Williams. Today, our special guest is Miss Aquina Grant. She's still here. I didn't run you off. No, I'm so glad you're still here. here. Talking about Southern University, talking about higher education, talking about all of the things that parents and students need to know yes. if they're interested in going to college, right, and starting a career. Now, one thing that is going on now that parents need to be doing or potential students need to be doing now is the federal application for student aid, yes. right? Yes, so they need to be filling out the FAFSA, especially if you're seniors, um, and they need to have oh, wow. also taken their ACT, so oh, seniors. now. Now, take your ACT now. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow, now. Okay, take it Sign now. Sign up now. Sign up now. Um, that's a great, you know, because fall is coming up, it's and right people, the sometimes you think, oh, I have time, but. Right. So don't procrastinate. Yeah, so the deadlines for those things are, are now. Now. Absolutely. <laughs> yesterday. Okay, yesterday. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about a special opportunity, the Fast Track program the Southern University of Shreveport is doing. Yeah, so Southern University of Shreveport yeah. is offering um, a Fast Track for students if they didn't get a chance to enroll in the spring. They can still start March 6th. March 6th of the March classes. March 6th. But they need to call today. They need to call today. 670-9488. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so tell me about the money. Can I get Absolutely. So they can, funding they can still apply um, for the, fel right. the, the free application for federal student okay. aid. They can still fill out the FAFSA um, and still see what they're possibly um, eligible for. That's great. So 
you know, we talk a little bit about programs. One of my favorite programs is the aviation program, the airframe power plant maintenance program. Yes. Yeah. So we also have that, and it, it's downtown. Yeah, um, at the airport, downtown it, airport. At the downtown airport, yeah. and so we have aviation mechanics where they learn to work on planes. Yeah, because so what I do know is that if you're flying in Shreveport, if you're going up and down in a plane, that one of the Southern University students more than likely repair that more plane than to likely keep it, on that you plane. know. Yeah. Yes. To keep it in the air, which is key. Yes, we want that. <laughs> yes, we definitely. Want to feel safe. So, um, you know, I've looked. You know, I've walked around the campus and I've observed just this trend you mentioned earlier about you know the campus being an HBCU and the first time you're working there. But one thing I've noticed is the diversity. Yes. It's a lot of diversity, and it not is a lot just of you know yeah. traditionally African American, Caucasian, but noticed a lot of different populations yes. from the Hispanic population Middle Eastern, to Middle Eastern. We, we have students here from Africa, from the Sudan, we have students here um, from Saudi Arabia, just wow. from all over. And so um, it's a cultural melting pot. Um, and I actually After this message, we'll be right back with more hot seats with Mel Williams. You can catch me six days a week on iKoala Radio. You don't want to miss the hot seat with me, Melba Williams. It's just music, baby. Okay, because we know somebody is just tuning in, let's talk a little bit, you know, about Fast Track. Okay. So now is the time. Now is the time to enroll for Fast Track. Okay. Again, it's March 6th. That's when the classes start. That's when the classes start. Okay. And the good thing is the semester still ends for these students on on May 15th. So that's about eight weeks. That's about eight weeks. That's why it's the Fast Track, That's right? why it's the Fast okay. Track. So they get an accelerated pace, right. um, and they're still able to end the semester with students who started in January. Great. Right. So one other big thing, and I'm not sure if you can talk a little bit about this, that Southern is, uh, that's going on at Southern, is the 50th anniversary. Yeah, so this year is our 50th anniversary. Wow. And we are celebrating all year. All year, so we're not gonna do one year. day. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna do all year. We're gonna do it all year. So instead of just having one big celebration, wow. um, Southern has, has taken the opportunity to recognize this tremendous event and we're celebrating the whole year long so stay tuned for an event near you that's right and, and I know that recently during the convocation Southern hosted Judge Lynn Toller yeah, from Divorce here. Court she was absolutely phenomenal she was phenomenal and yeah. she really gave the students some nuggets um, that I'm sure that they'll keep with them a lifetime yeah that I mean it was spectacular so some of those events are going to be you know, moving on throughout the year. I know there's a huge birthday party coming up in yes. September, on September 19th, the big birthday party, so we don't want to miss that. We don't want to miss that. Because I hear when you turn 50, you have to really do it up. You have to do it for 50. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yes. So if you turn like 35 or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, you just have a birthday cake. But 50 is the one. 50 is the it's one. It's half a century, so you got to do it. You got to do it up. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, in your final words, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, just just give our parents, viewers, you know, just that one thing that you think they need to know if they take nothing else away. What do you think? If they take nothing else away, you know that their students will be cared for. Well, that's that's special. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you for having me. And um, welcome back home. Welcome back to Street Four. We're really excited to have you back. Another uh, lion in the house. <laughs> Well, thanks again, and we'll have you back. Okay. Absolutely, we'll talk a little more about Southern University and uh, maybe some more higher education things that are coming down the pipeline. Okay, absolutely. So thank you for joining me on the hot seat, and uh, we'll see you next week with another hot show. Stay tuned. <laughs>